so hello guys and welcome to my channel uh, every day is a learning day so today as you can see uh, my stream is a bit different my uh, my tutorial is a bit different you can see it is clearer and uh, i have this uh, you can see myself in that little circle which is different from my previous tutorial and also the camera is clearer so i've learned some new things and uh, i'm putting them in place in this tutorial and i believe in the next tutorials it will be even better than this one so welcome so in this tutorial i want to speak about uh, i'll be i'll be explaining uh, my project so i want to work on some project and uh, I will kind of document it and post it on YouTube. So I need Visual Studio Code and that is what I've just downloaded. I already installed Python and other programs. I also have PyCharm. So I'm setting up my environment for the project. So let me do something let me install visual studio but uh, i have two of them so i'll install the latest version or did i install it already let me see visual sorry visual i haven't installed it yet so i'll install it i have pycharm but it's kind of heavyweight i need a lightweight code editor so I want to install Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Okay, what will I need? Yeah, I don't really use this so let me just continue. So the project uh, I'll be utilizing Django and maybe React. I haven't decided on the front-end framework I'll be using yet or even if I'll be using vanilla, JavaScript or C and CSS, plain CSS. So all I know is that I'll use Django in the back-end. I'm more of a back-end developer than a front-end developer. So let me install. I think that's done. So finish. I think it's going to install Visual Studio to launch it. Okay, so there's a way I always use my Visual Studio, but I always log in so that I don't start installing my extensions like afresh. So when you sign in, uh, if you sign in a new computer or install Visual Studio code in a new computer and you want all your extensions back you can click turn on settings sync then check all this uh, make sure they are all checked then click sign in then sign in with github if, I, if you're using github i think there are people who use microsoft account so personally i use github so that's what i'm going to use so once you've done that you'll see settings sync turning on and at that moment it will be installing the extensions you need so you just give it some time to install all the extensions that i had previously installed in my previous machine so as i wait on that i want to create my Django project so i'll if you get to my desktop then I uh, think I have uh, projects folder so I'll click projects folder then inside the projects folder I want to create a new folder let me call it uh, final year project okay 
so I'm assuming it's my final year university project so that's why I'm naming it like that so I'll open it and uh, I should open terminal here so let me open CMD I'm not using Linux so I've a tough time doing that I had some problems installing Linux in my desktop so I'm stuck with Windows don't have an option so CD. Oh, that's it. CLS. I'm used to Linux, so I always get some problems with Windows. So I'm in this folder, the folder I just created called Final Year Projects. So the first thing, when well, you want, if you want to create a Django project, is to create a virtual environment. So that the packages installed in your computer will not get mixed up with the Python packages you want to use in your project. Because remember, when you deploy your project to, let's say when you deploy your project, you don't want some unnecessary packages to be installed on the server. Because uh, those packages take some space on the server that can be uh costly you don't want that so first I create a virtual environment to do that we use python dash m uh, v e n d then the virtual environment name so in my case i'll just name my virtual environment v e n v you can name your virtual environment as you want some people name it env some people virtual env whatever you want so in my case i like naming it venv so if you're using uh linux you'll have to put here python 3 linux or mac os it's a requirement to put python 3 so i'm using windows so and I don't have Python 3 installed in my computer, so I, the only Python I have is Python 3, so I don't have to specify the version, so press enter, then give it some time. So I wait for that. Let me look at the extension, so they are installing, as you can see, all the extensions I, I had before are installing automatically. So i just give it some time. I hope my internet is okay. Okay. So in today's tutorial, I just want to explain. Uh, I just want to set up the environment. Then maybe from tomorrow, I'll start the coding part. And for the coding part, I think I'll start by designing the database I'll be using using a software like. Let me see, let me show you. So I always design my database using diagrams but not. Let me see, I might be having some. Uh -huh. Start now. I think I have some. Diagrams I can show you as you wait for this one and this one. So this one is not done. Let me see again. Not that one. It's not done yet. Oh, I think it's done now. It's done down as you can see. You can modify that. So I think it's okay now. So we are waiting on this one. I don't know why it, it takes a lot of time to create a virtual environment in Windows. Anyway, 
this. So I always use my GitHub to store my uh, my diagram. So open existing diagram. Authorize. I think I've already authorized my GitHub. So it will just be a matter of selecting the right repository containing those diagrams. So the repository is called ERTs. Then uh, social base. So this one is one of the databases I designed in uh, one of my projects. Let me zoom out. So this is it. So there is a user listing category and type tables so the relationship between category and listing is one to many one uh, many listings can fall under one category okay uh, the relationship between user and listings is also one to many a listing can only be posted by one user so a listing cannot be posted by two users then the relationship between type and category is one many to many uh, different categories can fall under different types yeah so this one was one of my database designs i think i can get another one so open existing let me find another let me see it's not done yet oh it's done now so i've just created my virtual environment using the command prompt so i can open that folder inside my visual studio code so I click this icon then open it's in the desktop then projects then finally a project then select folder so this is the folder i'll be working in so i'll open my terminal you can do that by uh, is it here first you must trust the project uh, i think it's view is it here really terminal here yeah. or you can click control backtick backtick is uh, the button found uh, to the left of one in your keyboard okay so i'll activate my virtual environment so to do that in windows in my current data directory i'll go to venv then to scripts scripts so in the virtual environment we have a folder called scripts then inside the scripts we have a file called activate so basically uh, what you do in activating the virtual environment is to run activate file which is found in uh, the script folder that is found in the in the VNV folder. So press enter. Uh -huh. So I'm getting some error. Execution policies. So I have a tutorial on how to fix that. Uh, let me check it. YouTube.com So I don't remember the actual command but I, I remember creating a tutorial on that so I'll just check one of my tutorials and So here then your channel uh, don't play uh, this one do 
I'll be forced to write it manually. So get execution policy. Is it one on? So there is a dash. So get execution of policy. There is a dash in the middle. Let me use uh, PowerShell. PowerShell. I think it is PowerShell that is we should be using at the. So get. execution policy so restricted so at the moment uh, the execution policy is restricted but we want to make it unrestricted so that we can run the virtual environment so let me see the command for so set execution policy restricted that is for restricting but I want unrestricted so search okay execution sorry policy unrestricted press enter all yes to all so you click a must it be capital? Let me see. I'm getting an error. I think I should run this one as an admin before doing anything so PowerShell then uh, run as an admin I think that was the problem yes then set execution policy and restrict it then yes to all yes okay. Let's see, get execution policy to see if it's now unrestricted. Unrestricted, so that's it. I think now we can, uh, we can activate our virtual environment in peace. Okay, that's it. So, this tutorial is... Uh, I've just closed the tutorial, but... It explains how to fix that error. Error about execution of policies. It's in one of my tutorials. Okay, so that is done. So the next thing is to create a Django project. No, first we install Django. So we'll install Django using pip. So pip install. Django. Make sure when you are in the virtual environment to, to know whether you are in virtual environment or not. You see this bracket before the terminal. Terminal. So here bracket V and V. It will be your virtual environment name. So first I install Django. To do that, I'll use the command pip install Django. Okay. I think I can close this. So 
let me show you that tutorial again in case you find that problem you move to this tutorial you check this tutorial it explains how to fix that error about running scripts is disabled on the system okay i'm waiting for django to get installed so the command for installing django also installs some projects that are necessary for django like sql pass tz data and this one sgref okay so once you've installed django you won't see any change here but in real sense the django and all those packages have been, have been stored in the virtual environment so you can't see them outside i think if we move to lib you'll see django sql pass this one so they're hidden in the vn okay once you've done that now we can start our project so to start your project you use the command django dash admin start project then the name of the project so in my case i'll name it django project so i normally name my projects django project because uh, the book I used to learn Django was naming projects Django projects were just I was just stuck with that so don't forget to put a dot in the end if you forget it will create redundant folders and you don't want that so don't forget to put that dot in the end then press enter okay once you find that command you'll see here folder called django project under file called manage.py so this manage.py file will be very very important going forward and as you are about to see in a few I'll, I'll just use it right now so after creating a project django allows you to see if the project has been uh, created successfully. So to do that, you use the command Python manage dot py run server. So in this command, you, as you can see, I'm using the this manage dot py file to execute the command run server. So. The, the, this is just one part where the manage.py will be used there are many parts going for that will be using that manage.py file to run different commands so press enter so there is a warning you have it in an applied migrations at the moment just ignore it now i want you to look at the project how it looks at the moment so this is the project at the moment if the install works successfully congratulations you are seeing this page because debug is true you can know those we'll see those ones later you can check the documentation through this page so i'll just right click then open a new tab and uh, this is the general documentation it is very important to learn uh, go through it get more information about Django that you can't find in many tutorials then Django has a podding up tutorial for those who are learning Django so you can follow along this tutorial to create your first project so at the moment I'm only interested in this page so you're seeing this page because we ran uh, Python money.py run server and uh, starting the development server at this one so you are told this one so you are supposed to control click but I already know the links so I just went straight ahead to the 
browse and paste it. Okay, that's it for creating the project. I'll I've just stopped the server using Control C command. Now I can clear the terminal. Then uh, the next thing you can do is will I really add anything at the moment? No, I don't want to add anything at the moment. So I think I'll continue from that tomorrow. I don't want to give any spoilers to you guys, so I've just created the virtual environment, activated it, and installed Django project. Then I showed you the real project, and that's it for today. So, in, the, in today's video, the most important thing I wanted to do is test my uh, new environment then also wanted to set up my development environment so from tomorrow maybe I'll start the coding part so thank you for watching and let's meet in the next tutorial